be reading out of, uh, for those of you who are new, uh, I typically follow the lectionary. The lectionary is a set of lessons that uh, that is prepared, it's been prepared for, I mean, you know, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, they're basically lessons in, in scripture uh, and they are set for uh, a certain date. Uh, and so that's what I do. I kind of follow along uh, the lectionary and where that is uh for this particular day. And today, there's a gospel reading uh, in, in Mark chapter 4, and it's uh, Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41, uh, and that is what we're going to be reading today. And uh, this might be, if you've, if you've been around church, this might be familiar to you. This might be a, a, a story uh, that you've heard before. So let me read it, and then I've got a couple of uh, quick things I want to that I want to share uh, with you about this reading. So here it is, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. So they had been teaching and preaching. Jesus had been doing all this stuff and, and healing, and, 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 uh, and he was tired. It was the end of the night, and he was like, let's, <clears throat> let's get on the boat, let's get on the lake, and let's go somewhere else. Um, and really, honestly, like just to get away from people. And uh, Mark, in Mark, Jesus is very, um, I think Mark's Jesus is very human. He gets very frustrated. He gets tired. He gets hungry. He gets, uh, he gets angry at people. Um, and there's, there's this, this, uh, the, these moments where, where like this in Mark four, where Jesus just says, you know, I'm kind of done and I'm tired of people and I want to just, uh, let's go somewhere else and get away from people. Ever felt like that? Amen. I think Jesus got a, a strong amen over here. <clears throat> um, so, I think Jesus might have been an introvert. That's just all I'm saying about that. But on that day when they, the evening had come, and he said to them, let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats also were with him. A great wind and storm arose. And the waves started to beat upon the boat so that the boat was actually being swamped. It was getting ready to sink. But he, Jesus, was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are going to die? And Jesus woke up and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and they said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? How many people have ever heard this story? Anyone? Oh yeah, you've, you've heard this one probably if you've been around the church a little bit. Um, I think there's a couple of things that I, there's just a couple of things I want to point out here uh, that that I hope that um, will will help make sense of this maybe maybe in a little bit different way than what you've you've heard before but I don't know maybe not so uh, there's there's a couple of things in in Jesus day all right <clears throat> in Jesus day there were there were two at least two truths. That most people believed about the the sea and about the the waters, okay, about the oceans, about the seas, about the rivers, about the lakes, um, <clears throat> the Sea of Galilee or the Sea of Tiberias, whatever you want to call it. Um, there are two basic things that that especially uh, Jewish people in the the first century would have believed, and here's one of them. One is that. There were monsters in the sea, right? There's a lot of different scriptures that talk about Leviathan. And there's a lot of different scriptures that, that mention that there are sea monsters and sea creatures. The sea was kind of, a, of an, un, well, it was definitely an uncharted, not like what we have now where we've been able to <clears throat> scientifically go and look. But even to this day, there's parts of the, the oceans we haven't gone to, right? Like we, it's still kind of mysterious. <clears throat> but but 
for them, it was extremely mysterious. And it was kind of extremely scary. Like, like and the sea monsters were not good monsters. Are, are you with me? They, they weren't like, they weren't like uh, Barney, okay? They, these were not, you know, children's uh, dinosaurs that I love you, you love me, you know, that type of thing. These, this, was, this was scary, demonic sea monsters. And, and a lot of people, you didn't want to go out into the sea a lot. You wanted to be very careful because especially, um, I mean, there was a lot of mythology around sea monsters and the idea of that what controlled those and it was usually um, demonic or satanic or some kind of otherworldly uh, thing that that was in uh, the sea monsters. All right, so so let's, um, I, I don't know, but how many people are scared of going into the ocean in the water? Anyone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all grew up in Oklahoma, didn't we, right? <laughs> Is that what it is? Okay, whatever. It sounds horrible, what you just said. Basilophobia? The last. T-H. Basilophobia? Yes. Okay. We call it survival at my house. Well, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, how many of you grew up with... Uh, uh, yeah. uh, and you, at that point, was like, I'm never taking a bath again. Like, just try to make me get in there, Mom. I'm not doing it. Um, just spray me down with a hose outside, and I'll be fine. <laughs> um, there's still a lot of fear around. Like, my brother lives out in California, and he loves to go scuba diving, and he's done. He goes to Hawaii every year, and he goes to he goes scuba diving. He does all this stuff. I'm out, bro. Like, there's no way. I am terrified. Like, I don't – there's stuff in – Andrea put something about an alligator in, and she's like, yeah, I don't go into the – right? Claremore, see, it's not safe, people. That's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> and I'm just trying to protect you. I love you. I want you to be okay. Don't, there's water moccasins. There are water moccasins. Okay, anyways, all I'm saying is we are still afraid of this. Like, I don't have gills. I'm not made for the water. This is not, I do not. There's a couple of things I don't like to do. I don't like to fly very much. I don't like to get in the, I'm here, I'm a brown person. I'm a, I'm a, Land walker. This is who I am. This is my space, right? So, but, but, so we kind of connect with things that are otherworldly, you know, to like flying or in the deep ocean. It's scary, right? But then, like, for, for, for Jesus' day, it literally, I mean, there really were monsters. They were, they were demonic monsters in the sea. You, you gotta be careful when you go in the sea. So that's, that's one thing that's happening. The other truth. That, is, that was fairly universal for the Roman Empire was this, is that the sea belonged to the emperor. That the sea and everything in it belonged to Caesar, belonged to the emperor, belonged to the empire. So, so as, you know the stories where it says that Jesus went by and he called some fishermen and said, so they left their nets and they're like, sure, we'll follow you. We'd rather, and a lot of people say, how can you leave your livelihood? That was not the livelihood. They were beholden to Caesar. Anything, all those fish that were in the Sea of Galilee belonged to Caesar. Are you with me? <coughs> Excuse me. So there were two truths that were operating during Jesus' day. The sea is scary and demonized with monsters. It, it's not for us. It's dangerous and scary. And everything in it belongs to Caesar. And it is under Caesar's control and power. Are you following me? All right. Jesus shows up in this story. He's going across the sea. It starts to storm. So one of the first things that happens is they're thinking, oh, the devil got us. This is the devil's getting worse. The storm is hitting. We're out in the middle. Of, we're going to die. Of course, Satan is strong. The, the, the Leviathan, the storms, the seas, this, all of the, the, the storm gods are out to get us. We're going to die. And their fearless leader is sleeping. Which I think is making a point. That's, that's a point of saying, like, here's someone who is absolutely not phased by the sea. Second 
thing is happening is this. When Jesus gets up and says, peace, be still, and then it gets calm, they're like, who is this that controls the sea that is actually belongs to Rome and to the Roman Caesar? So, so there's, there are a couple of things that are happening here that are happening on different levels for these guys that are with him, for these people that are following him. Now, the last thing that I want to say, and I think this is the most important thing, okay, because this is, like that kind of stuff, what I'm just talking about, kind of explaining it, I don't know. I mean, that's, first of all, I get really weirded out when we take these stories and we make them universal, because, like, it's like, well, but that means that if you get out on a boat and it gets really scary, then just pray and, to, and God will, t will t make the storm go away. But here's the thing. How many millions of sea storms have we had since 2,000 years ago? No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, how many? I mean, we, like, uh, millions of sea storms. Millions of people have died on in sea. I mean, we have the Titanic. is like one of the most famous. I mean, there's all kinds of things that have happened on the oceans and the seas. I, I don't think... I don't think that this story is put in here saying, oh, by the way, if you trust Jesus enough, he's, the whole story is about he's going to calm the sea. I kind of don't think that's the point. I really don't. I think that these stories are put in here for larger metaphors that are happening for us as we look at the world around us. So I don't think it's about that, okay, I need to be a Christian so I can be safe when I go on the water. Like, I, I don't, I just don't think, I, you're not going to convince me that that's the point. <clears throat> but, I think there's a metaphor that's happening. And I think you can convince me that the metaphor is that there are two things happening in our world just like it was in theirs. There are times where, where scary stuff happens, and we don't understand it, and we can't plot it, and we can't research it, and we can't figure it out. And there's these moments where storms hit, and we are overcome, and we are swamped, and we feel like we're drowning. Anyone? Am I just preaching to myself? Or is there two other people that I can... Anyone? Okay, one. There's one person. All right. <clears throat> Don't raise him. But I, I mean, I, there's times where storms hit, and you just feel it. The other day, it was so weird. I was talking to Lenny. I got up and I was like, I'm just, I'm depressed today. I'm just down. I'm not usually a depressive person. I'm not a person that really gets down a lot. Um, but it was just, and I don't even know what it was. Right? And Lenny and I talked through some stuff. And we were, but one of the things that happens in life is that we are, we are, we're going to be faced with things that we don't understand, and they're going to feel depressive, and they're going to feel oppressive, and they're going to feel like they're overwhelming, and they're going to feel like, the, like it's swamping us, and we're going to drown. And so one of the things that I think is I think that part of this story is literally put in here so that when we hit those moments where we feel like the sea is going to get us, that we know that there's a God, that we know that there's a Jesus... That says, peace, be still. Are you with me? And I, th I, I, just, I just believe that that's part of the whole point of the story. Is to say to us, listen, I know it's scary. I know it's, it's, it's freaky. I know that we're being swamped. But there, there has, I mean, the fact that Jesus is asleep during the storm is I mean, another huge metaphor. It's, he's not a, he's not afraid of it. And, and, and this is another part. Jesus is in the storm with them. Hello? Jesus wasn't somewhere else. Jesus was in the boat. And one of the things that I think that we, that I think part of this is trying to tell us is that the type of person Jesus is, is, it, is Jesus... God is someone that gets in the boat with us. So many people will say, well, I don't believe in a God because bad things happen. <clears throat> Amen. Um, <laughs> have you heard that? Have you, or have you thought that? It's like, I don't know if I can believe in a God because bad things happen. 
Well, the thing that's frustrating to me about that is that the, that the Bible never, ever tells us that bad things will stop happening when we believe in God. It never says that. It never says that. It, but it does say constantly, it, when ev- Psalm 23rd, the 23rd Psalm, one of our favorite, everybody learns it, you know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are what? With me. Well, damn it, that's not good. Because <laughs> I thought that, that I will not fear walking through the valley of the shadow of death because it won't happen because you're going to make it go away. That's not what it says. Are you with me? It's not what it says. It says that God is with us as we walk through. Here it says that Jesus is in the boat as it is in the midst of the storm. Yes, the storm ended up stopping. And by the way, most of the storms in our life stop. I mean, we have multiple storms, right? But usually, I mean, one, that one storm that we're in will stop. Now we got to get ready for the next one to come in. But, you know, that's the good news. But, but, but the idea is that it's not that we don't have storms. It's that he's in the boat with us. And that's kind of, to me, the most important thing that I hope that you take from this is the idea of peace. The idea that, that Jesus is a, is, is a Messiah of peace. God is a God of peace. God doesn't think lightly of your storm. God is not thinking that you're griping and being a victim because you're upset. He wasn't upset. I mean, I know he says, do you have no faith? But that's, I, I think that's a whole, I think that's, that goes back to all kinds of stuff. But the whole idea of that, who owns the oceans? God does. It's not Caesar, right? God, they're, they're amazed that, that this storm could be calmed by someone that wasn't in, a, in Roman elite you know, power. This is Jesus saying God owns the ocean. God owns the water. God controls everything. Are you with me? Not that God makes everything happen, but that God is in control. God is with us in that midst. So, so, so we're in pride mode. There's a lot of people in our church and in our city and the people that we love that are LGBTQIA plus people. And, and it's not that God made the storm for you, right? It's not that God said, okay, you're going to be gay, you're going to be loving, you're going to be trans, and you're gonna, you're, I'm going to make your life be hard. No. But sometimes people don't understand other people. People, they get scared of things that they don't understand. And so then there's, a, there's pressure and there's oppression and there's, there's abuse that comes on to people. And here's what God says. Not that you don't have faith if you're in the storm. What God says is that peace is something that I am bringing to you in the midst of the storm. And the last thing that I would say about that is that if we are a church that is open and affirming, then we must be actively trying to bring peace to people's lives who are in the storm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes? So, so when you walk in a room and there's tension, you should say, peace. Your, your presence should bring peace. Right? Just the fact, like you should, we talk about it this time, and I haven't said this in a while, but whenever God created, you know, in the story of creation, that there's a couple of stories in, in Genesis about creation, but in the first one where God does something, and then at the end, God looks at it, and God goes, it is good. So, one of the things that we say here is that God gooded the earth. Right? That whenever God showed up, God said, that's good. Whenever we show up, we should good the earth. Wherever, whatever room we're in, we should good it. Wherever, wherever we should, wherever we show up, we should peace it. We peace. That's that's the heart of Jesus. That's the heart of God. Is I'm walking into the storm to bring peace. Or 
if somebody walks into my life that is in the storm, I, I don't join the storm with them. I bring a calming, loving kindness and gentleness to their situation. Are, are you with me? Mm. So, so this, is, this is what I think is happening. I really do. I think that, that Jesus is making two points. Number one, the sea is not going... It, it, the sea and whatever's in the sea is not more powerful than God. Mm -hmm. And also, the sea is not owned by Caesar. Yep. So those are those two things that are being, being said. And, the, and in the midst of that, as they crash together, it is peace. That's really what God is bringing. Do you see it? Yep. God's bringing peace. God's saying, look, I know, I know that the last two months of your job has been held. Peace. Look, I, I know this relationship is, is stormy, it's falling apart, and it's, it's hurtful. Peace. I know that you're scared if you're going to come out and what to say and how to say it. And when to, peace. I know you don't know how you're going to financially make it, but, but God walks in and says, peace. Are, are you with me? And the community of God, the community of Jesus, should be willing to walk in that peace with others. Because here's why. Someone at this table is doing well. Someone at this table is really in a storm. Someone at this table can bring help and guidance and love and peace in the midst of their storm. I didn't say you can figure it out. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say you have all the answers. I just said your presence can bring peace. Are you with me? Someone at this table is doing well. Someone at that table is in a storm. We need each other. Next week, someone at this table is going to be hurting, and someone at that table is going to be okay. And they brought, they walk into that situation, situation with peace. Are you with me? So when we show up at a pride parade, or when we show up with someone who's struggling, or we show up with someone who's in our, in our midst and needs a refrigerator fixed, the idea <laughs> is we can bring peace because that's who Jesus is. And so if that's who Jesus is, then that's who we are. Are you with me? Like, it's not about rated R movies or being gay or, or who you vote for. It's about bringing peace. Are you with me? It's about knowing that God is the, in control of all of it. And no matter how big the storm is, no matter how frustrating it is, and no matter how much we think that the, that the politicians are screwing all of this, God's bigger than all of that. Amen? Yes. Okay, I think I've done enough. <laughs> I think I've yelled enough. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan, come on. Jordan, I, I should just give Jordan's A. When you think I need to be done, just start walking out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good thing we don't have like a big gong back here. <laughs> no. Don't say that. I should have never said that. May we know the Jesus of peace. And may we be people that follow in Jesus' example and bring peace. Grace and peace. And what we do in Grace and Peace, by the way, for those of you who are new, is we actually go to other people at other tables and say to them, Grace and peace to you. Now go and do that. And get permission before you hug someone. <laughs> At this table. And so this is a barrier destroying place. This is a holy place where walls are torn down, where uh, the systems of this world don't apply. Uh, this, is a, this is a alternative to patterns of this world. And so uh, join us today. That's the Lord's table. As Jesus was eating with his friends on the night before he was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. And he took
took the cup of wine, and he poured it out, and he said, Take and drink, all of you. This is my blood shed for you. Now let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. And a reminder that we also have gluten-free bread available in the form of these wafers. Uh, so... All are welcome at this table. All are welcome. This is a boundaryless space, uh, a wallless space, but no one is forced. Uh, so if you'd like to just remain seated, you totally can and no one will care. That's great. Um, so we'll form a line and we'll have to love this community. And so it's easy for me to get back to. Um, and I love the space we have. So it's easy for me to talk about. Um, the reality is that we have needs. Individually within the community, we have needs as a community, uh, right? And we can't function without meeting those needs, both our individual needs and our needs as a community. Uh, I know there's a lot of work around money, um, not just in the church. A lot of people have trauma related to money, um, and whether you know their parents had an unhealthy relationship with.